Self-advocating with me begins by really and truly showing that I have the capability and that I can excel in what I do. It's about being able to be in a meeting or be in a large you know, audience, where, whatever the environment is, and be able to project your thoughts, the principles that are important to you, and how you think you can contribute to the success of an institution. It's not as tough and as lonely as it sounds to say you have to advocate for yourself or mentor yourself. When, when we talk about self-advocacy, we're not talking about a magic potion. We're talking about something we do daily, in our work day. Things that we engage in with our supervisors, with our colleagues, with the people we supervise. This is not something you wake up in the morning and you drink in a cup of coffee. Here we are, self, I'm self-advocating for myself. You have to self-advocate with the work you do, with your work ethics. You have to demonstrate daily what you're worth. When you think about self-advocacy uh, in terms of someone's career, whether um, starting out as a student and then going on to their careers, it's very important because no one is going to look out for you as much as you yourself will. They don't you know, assume that you want every opportunity, so it's important to make it known. Throughout my career, self-advocacy has been very important and also very difficult. I think we as women, and I myself, who is from the South, have learned through time that it's appropriate to be polite, to wait your turn, to listen, to wait, make an opportunity to, to talk to people, wait for them to speak. And I've learned that in order to get ahead, you really have to advocate for yourself at all times. And it may be very difficult, but it's something you really must do in order to succeed. In addition to having your leaders or the decision makers or, and your peers and colleagues see that you can do what you can do or what you say you can do, in fact, I can believe it as well. Um, I am confident in my ability to take on new challenges um, something that's completely outside the scope of what I've done in the past, I'm willing to jump in and try it. So when you're able to be that flexible, people are willing to call you in to be on their team no matter what. Women cannot wait for the invitation. Uh, you, ha you have to, again, doing the spade work, doing the groundwork to make sure that you are ready for uh, promotions and, other, and opportunities is key and taking ownership, you know, uh, volunteering for, the, for a project, taking ownership of it, that is key. But we have to be willing to take the risk of asking for something, and if it doesn't go your way that particular time, you can't take it personally, but you have to be creative and think about um, opportunities that you can ask for. You cannot wait for the invitation. I think it's played an important role, and it's interesting. I think it is an area where women often have a difficult time. We are, in my in my experience, we are not as good advocates for ourselves often as men are. But clearly, in a competitive field like like politics here in Washington, there's a lot of competition for for terrific positions and important positions, and, and you're going to need to make your own case and 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 promote your own experience and ability to to land some of those positions. So when a opportunity arises on sort of a high-profile assignment that a lot of people might be interested in, you might be one of the first people they think about because you specifically raised it. Some of the challenges I faced um, where I would try to assert myself and advocate for myself, it was almost, well, this is not your time, this is not the place, this is not the thing. And remember, too, we come from a culture where women are generally not, do not advocate for themselves. Well, for many years I didn't think it was important to self-promote myself and my career, but a few years ago I realized that it was very, very important. And what I started doing was basically, you know, the work that I do, you always have to make sure that you give more than 100%. You know, you have to let your work uh, speak for you, but that's not enough. You have to network. You have to make sure that your supervisors and the people that you're working with know that you are looking for different uh, challenges and opportunities. You have to look for mentors, you know, and I am using the word mentors, not mentor. You know, look for sponsors. Uh, at the same time, you should be looking to mentor others because it's all part of a package. It's not just one thing that you need to do to self-promote yourself. Uh, you have to make sure that the people uh, in the organization know that you are capable of doing other things. I'm an attorney by profession, so 
uh, not only do I, I, it's very easy to advocate for others, but sometimes it becomes difficult to advocate for yourself. And that's a balance that you have to establish and see it as more as a challenge than anything else. You can uh, do small projects, you know, volunteer so they know that you're out there and you're, you know, you have other skills that you can use in other, you know, positions. So make sure that they know that you're looking for something else for the future. And it doesn't have to be immediately, but for, you know, you know, a year later, for two or three years later, you know, start establishing goals so you know where to go and, and they know, you know, and they keep you in mind when opportunities arise. One's credentials um, would speak for themselves, one's accomplishments in the past, and that energy that one has to have in terms of advocacy becomes very important. Letting your supervisors and, and decision makers in the organization and, and others, you know, your mentors, your sponsors, letting them know that you are open to so many other new challenges and responsibilities and that you can do it, that you have transferable skills that can be used in other positions and that you're willing to, to learn what, whatever you need to learn to get there. You know, we can't uh, think that just with the work, you know, I used to think that because I work very hard that they will notice me, and they did. They knew that I was working, you know, doing my job. But it took me, like I said, until a few years to realize that that was not enough, that I needed to talk to other people, that I needed to make it known that I was, you know, looking for other opportunities, and that's how I made it to the SES. In the Army, because of the role the Army plays, you're always training your replacement. Your goal is, of course, to move up in the ranks and also to make sure the person behind you moves up as well. There's a saying that sometimes you move ahead because of uh, who you know. I actually think that to turn that around a bit is you have the opportunity to excel and grow because of who knows you. And if there was any advice that I could give uh, people is don't be afraid to reach out. Happens that I'm older than my supervisor. And I know things that he may not be familiar with. They're not technical things. They may be things about life, experience, and it counts for something. So you are a mentor to somebody in your life every single day. Realize that as a woman. I feel that you know, as a person who is a woman and is a minority, you do need to seek out mentors. They, not, they may not necessarily seek you out. Who do people see as an effective um, leader in your organization and how could I be helpful to that person? I have a very good friend who has the notion of having your own personal board of directors. She's a woman and she has accumulated over time a series of people who help her in different aspects of her life. When you have a mentor who's usually the, the senior person, they're very busy and so you have to be, um, you know, you, you have to have good judgment on how much of their time you want to you know, take and what kinds of questions and what kinds of things that you think you need to be discussing with them. And then you have an opportunity to really work with someone in a concrete way where you start to learn from them. This is their style, this is their strategy, this is how they move an agenda. I usually try to make sure that I thought through what I wanted to discuss with them, where I thought they could make a difference in whether I'm thinking about a different path within the institution or I want, I'm having an issue with somebody that I work with. So those are the kinds of things that I tried uh, to, to think through before I talk to my mentor. To move up, it's constantly been a, uh, a series of, I mean, I've been in four different positions in the federal government, and in each one, it's been you know, significant growth from the previous one. And I've primarily gotten those positions through building relationships. That's been key. Looking back, I have to say that our mothers broke the barriers for us. It was much more difficult for them. But as a young woman, you come into a new environment and there are expectations, but there is also a speculation. If you're young, talented, bright, some people may resent that. Others will always be there, some to make your life easier, some to make your life harder, but it is up to you. 
getting into, as you say, perhaps who mentors you, who takes you under their wing, who helps you take those next steps in your career. I think that's the area where women sometimes still don't get the same opportunities as, as men do. When you find yourself in a, a industry that is very male dominated, um, my experience has been that the women were harder on the women than they were necessarily on the guys. And so uh, kind of an attitude of, well, if you're doing it wrong, you're screwing it up for all of us. And so I think as we look towards mentoring the people who come behind us, we have to be careful about being fair to the ones that come behind us. Physically, you have to be there. Um, speaking with authority makes a difference. Um, making decisions. Uh, there's nothing worse than someone who's in charge who won't make a decision. You have to assert yourself on a daily basis. Be there for the tough job. Take the task that nobody wants to take. Nobody seems to like to take minutes anymore. Offer. Volunteer. I think it is important to be assertive. I think that's important for men and women. It, it, that one knows no gender. Uh, part of being assertive is being, being good at what you do having the, the data and the information to back up your assertions. You can't just be full of bluster without having, having done your homework and having the experience and hard work to, to back up what you're asserting. If you're always on time, at the top of your game, always professional, then that in itself can empower you. I can honestly say that I feel like I was mentored with the, number, with the majority of people that I sailed with. Um, we certainly didn't have formalized mentoring programs out there, but it goes back to what I said about you can learn something from every, everybody. And if you go out there with a good attitude, people will help you. Always remember, someone is watching. Always. Um, and never think that just because they are not saying anything that they have not learned a lesson. My advice would be manage your career and know what you want to do, how you want to do it, and check it off as you go along. Don't stop learning. Get out of your comfort zone. Don't think that because you have that degree, you've stopped learning. You never stop learning, and that will make you different. Women particularly do need to step up and be to have the abilities, to have the background, to have the experience, and then be confident and ready to assert themselves. And oftentimes that confidence and believe that you're qualified will help you get the job. So it's really important that you remember that as you go forward in your career. Just because you find yourself in a male-dominated industry can, doesn't mean in any way, shape, or form that you can't be successful. Um, if you go out there looking for problems, you're likely to find them. If you go out there just looking for opportunities and to get the most you can out of it and just to be a part of it, um, I think you can all be very successful. The point is not to pull up the ladders of opportunity after you as you go up, but to really extend it as far as we can and bring people up because somebody did it for us. We should do it for others. But always speak up for what you think is right. Be true to your principles, but don't confuse principle with rigidity. Just one final thing. Remember to smile and remember to laugh. Uh, life is good. Thank you.